Australia has always been a source of wonder and amazement for people around the world. It is known for its unique wildlife, stunning landscapes, and natural wonders. But what if we told you that scientists have made a terrifying discovery hidden within this vast continent? This discovery is so shocking that it could append our understanding of the natural world and have far-reaching implications for the future of our planet. Let's take a look at what the scientists have discovered now. There is evidence of human habitation in Australia dating back in 65,000 years. However, much of the continent's earliest archaeological sites are now submerged in water. The discovery of a 7,000-year-old site buried along Australia's continental shelf by archaeologists is the first of its type and provides an optimistic indicator that aboriginal artifacts and landscapes may be preserved offshore. The site dates back to the time when Australia was still inhabited by aboriginal people. One-third of Australia's livable land was submerged underwater after the most recent ice age, which ended approximately 12,000 years ago. This occurred as glaciers melted and the sea level increased. Jonathan Benjamin, a professor of maritime archaeology at Flinders University in Adelaide, led a team that searched for submerged sites off the coast of Marujga, a dry and rocky coastal region in the northwest of Australia. The project was called Deep History of Sea Country. This region is home to a vast number of archaeological sites spread throughout the interior, including over one million different works of rock art. Around 18,000 years ago, the coastline of Murujuga would have been an additional 100 miles longer than it is today. This would have been the case in this region when they first started searching the offshore land. However, Benjamin and his colleagues did not have much information to go on. We were going to an area that was completely cold in terms of the probability of discovery, explains Benjamin. So we just figured that if we could throw every bit of technology and a lot of smart people at the problem, that after three years we should be able to come up with something. The crew began their search for potential locations to preserve antiquities by scouring the shallow seas around Marujuga using sonar-equipped boats and airplanes equipped with a LiDAR scanning system. The previous year saw divers donning their scuba gear to conduct surveys of the previously determined targets. The first few sites we looked at did not produce any discoveries. After it, the Cape Brugueras channel appeared. Flinders University PhD student Chelsea Wiseman recalls being in turquoise water when her colleague John McCarthy grabbed her fin and showed her an igneous rock stone tool. Wiseman was in the middle of swimming when the incident occurred. The first one he handed me was just unmistakably a lithic artifact, recalls Wiseman. I couldn't have been more certain. After that, we found another four or five of them. In the end, the team was successful in unearthing 269 stone artifacts that had been buried around 8 feet below the surface of the water at Cape Brogueras Channel. The numerous tools appeared to have been designed for actions such as scraping, chopping, and hammering, and the researchers discovered one grindstone that may have been used for smashing up the seeds of spinifex grass to bake them into bread. The experts believe that the items are at least 7,000 years old. Their conclusion is based on radiocarbon dating as well as an analysis of when this location became submerged. The group also discusses a second location known as Flying Foam Passage, which is a freshwater spring located around 45 feet below the current sea level. This is a location where at least one stone tool, which is at least 8,500 years old, was discovered. According to Wiseman, a significant portion of our understanding of the archaeology of Australia's indigenous people is based on sites that would have been significantly further inland. This discovery will help indicate that there are more to be found offshore, said the researcher. This discovery was made offshore. Nicholas Fleming, a marine geoarchaeologist at the National Oceanography Center in the United Kingdom who is not involved in the sewer claims that archaeologists are particularly interested in examining the northern and northwest coast of Australia. There is a possibility that locations such as Cape Brugueras Channel hold evidence that provides researchers with further information regarding how people initially made their way over the sea from Southeast Asia to arrive on the continent and how they lived in this now-submerged coastal environment. The discoveries made by Benjamin's team provide the first clues to answering both of these questions, adds Fleming. They also demonstrate that the material does survive on the seafloor and that it can be discovered and analyzed as accurately as archaeology on land. 
According to Fleming's research, no tropical marine sites older than 5,000 years have been discovered till now. He claims that travelers, dredgers, or divers by coincidence uncover the vast majority of underwater prehistoric sites and subsequently report them to conservation authorities. Although coral development, algae, mangroves, cyclones, and other hazards threaten these underwater locations, the discovery proves that stone tools to survive in the seafloor in tropical environments, adds Fleming. U.S. marine archaeologist Amanda Evans, who was not involved in the study, said, It is a really exciting find, and it just continues to push the idea of submerged continental shelf sites to the forefront. Only a small group of people have been seriously involved in this field for the past decade. These kinds of discoveries stimulate participation and discussion. Shipwrecks have traditionally been the primary focus of marine archaeology, but interest in older, sunken landscapes with more subtle elements has been on the rise in the last decade. Submerged continental shelf around the planet equals a region the size of Africa. Therefore, there's still a lot to discover. Benjamin and his team discover the oldest seawall in the world at a 7,000-year-old site off Israel's shore. The west coast of North America is currently being explored by other teams looking for sites that could finally put to rest the age-old arguments over how people first settled the continent. 40 million acres of land that were dry 12,000 years ago is now underwater in the Gulf of Mexico, where Evans just returned last week after a six-day mission. She and her team excavated 40 core samples from the ocean floor in search of artifacts. However, underwater locations must be safeguarded before they may be studied. In countries like Australia, which has extensive offshore energy development but has not provided much protection for underwater landscapes with indigenous archaeology, Benjamin hopes the discoveries from Murujuga will influence public policy regarding maritime heritage. To safeguard a property that's over 7,000 years old requires a ministerial clearance, yet protecting a shipwreck that is 75 years old receives automatic protection in Australia, as Benjamin explains. Giant Gecko with a Beaky Face On a secluded island off the coast of Queensland lives a giant gecko with a beaky face, skinny legs, and a spine-covered tail. Dr. Conrad Hoskin of James Cook University found the gecko on Scoffell Island a rocky, boulder-strewn island in the Great Barrier Reef roughly 50 kilometers offshore from Mackay. The gecko, he continued, is perfectly at home among the stacked boulders on the deserted island, where it spends the day hidden from view and comes out at night. A survey conducted by Dr. Hoskin and the Queensland Parks and Wildlife Service and Partnerships turned up the gecko. The species name, Philurus fimbriates refers to the rim of spines around the gecko's leaf-shaped tail, and it was just published in the journal Zootoxa. Despite living in modern times, it's incredible to still find large and spectacular new species, Dr. Hoskin remarked. The fact that this gecko was previously unknown to science demonstrates that there are still unexplored regions of Australia. Brett Turnbull, the Whit Sunday's region's head ranger, was on the expedition that uncovered the new species. We maintain these islands based on the biodiversity they support, so this is a very exciting and significant find. To better control fire, invasive species, and other dangers, knowing which species occur where is crucial, as Mr. Turnbull put it. More studies are needed to understand the biodiversity of Queensland's Great Barrier Reef Islands, according to Dr. Rhonda Melzer, manager of the Ecological Assessment Unit of the Queensland Parks and Wildlife Service. While we have a thorough understanding of some of our islands, this new finding reveals that others have not been thoroughly explored. According to Dr. Hoskin, it's difficult to estimate the population size, but there are at least 30 individuals, and further research is needed before scientists can determine if the geckos are endangered. Some of the island's ecosystems are prone to spontaneous combustion, but the rocks should provide adequate protection from flames. We know of at least two poaching events of a leaf-tailed gecko near Townsville, Dr. Hoskin added, and the invasive Asian house gecko is another potential threat. And that's all for the video today. We'll be right back with more such videos. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.